Questions. Answers. Engagement. Information. This is Mark McNeese, and you're listening to One Thing or Another, The Interviews. This is Mark McNeese, your podcast host. These are um, interview podcasts only, and this is the very first one. Now, I've been wanting to do this for a number of years. I've interviewed lots of people on podcasts over the years, but I have kept wanting to do one that is just me, a guest, a microphone, and you, the listener. So here we are. My first guest I'm really happy about is Holly Palance. We'll be talking to Holly in just a second. I, I do want to explain that my newest book, uh, Black Cat, White Paws, A Maggie Doll Mystery, is available as an audiobook, and Holly is the reader. So um, I'm really happy to have her on. Holly, how are you? I'm great. Thank you so much for having me, Mark. Absolutely. Now, I did, one of the things I keep wanting to ask you about is uh, narrator versus reader. I know that you prefer read by um, as, as to narrated by, but um, do you, do you, is narrator, is, is that common, a common word? You know what? They are interchangeable now. Um, there's some differentiation between them, Mark, because if you say reader, it makes it sound like you're just reading the book. Right. But if you say narrator, to me anyway, it makes it sound like you are infusing that reading with performance. And right. so it's more of a narration. So I guess that's the way I look at it. Yes, and I, I, just, I, I just always re, re, uh, reference narration or the narrator of the book. Yeah. Like if I yeah. want to do this, I would, be, I, I would be looking into being an audiobook narrator. But um, it, 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 you're right, it's absolutely performance. And the best narrator... Which, you no, know, was interesting. I'm sorry to interrupt, but oh, it was okay. interesting. I was, I was talking to one of the directors at one of the big publishing houses the other day. Um, and she told me, I didn't know this, she told me that at uh, 2006 and before, there really was just the reading of the book. And something started to change after 2006, and performance came in. Hmm. Uh, I was unclear about that. I didn't. I didn't know the difference. I was curious about it because I'm new. I'm new to this work as a narrator and as a listener. And I thought to my. I asked her. I said, when did this happen? When did this world explode? And she said, um, right about 2006. So before that, you might say to your neighbor, you know, I'm going on a long trip. And I'm just dying to listen to something. Would you mind just reading this thing for me? So it was very kind of meat and potatoes read. But after that, um, money came into it and actors came into Mm -hmm. it. And uh, it became a different business, which is the business we know now. And it's a big business. It was the, at least the last time I checked a year or so ago, it was the fastest growing segment of the publishing industry was audiobooks. I'm sure that's absolutely true. I mean, I was told, and I don't know if I'm going to get this wrong, but I was told that there are 50,000 audiobooks a year. That's a lot. That is a lot. lot. Now, um, let's start with a little bit of um, Holly Palance 101, just so for listeners to give some background on you. Because I have, I mean, I have a bio. I can, you know, a little splice out, splice out your bio. But talk to us a little bit about Holly. Well, um... I have reinvented myself a number of times in my life. I started my working life as an actor. I went to drama school in London, and I spent 10 years in England working in the theater and on British television, BBC, ITV, what have you. Um, I then moved back to America in the 80s and lived and worked in New York, did a, did a show on Broadway, did some PBS work, worked at the Guthrie Theater, and eventually, um, I came back to Los Angeles where I was born and raised and um, got married and had kids and uh, did a number of television um, and did a number of television pieces and also some films. But in the long term, it wasn't for me, you know, Mm -hmm. talent, as we know, um, you got to have talent, (laughs) but you've also got to have luck and you've got to want this so much. And I found that um, I I was told I had the talent, uh, I had some luck, I didn't have, I didn't go all the distance, I didn't go the distance with it. Mm-hmm. And I found that um, I was curious about other things in life. So when I wasn't getting acting work, I, I was reading and, and writing and editing. 
And I got a job at a magazine in Los Angeles called Buzz Magazine as an editor and a, and a columnist. And um, I then went on to become the editor-in-chief of Santa Barbara Magazine and then the editor-in-chief of Distinction Magazine, which was the lifestyle publication at that time at the Los Angeles Times. And I loved that work. I just absolutely loved it. Uh, all of the work I've done includes words. So uh, about a year ago, people were talking to me about audiobooks, and they had started doing audiobooks. And I said, well, gosh, how do you even do that? I mean, again, it's words and mm -hmm. it's acting. So it puts together my favorite things, acting and words and stories. Um, so I started, uh, I started asking people about it, and I went and got an audiobook coach who is a, um, a terrific uh, narrator, somebody well-known, a couple of people who are very well-known. Um, I started entering this world. Um, it's interesting. I, I was telling a friend, we had went to the city, into New York City, we moved, but we, had, we were there a couple, like a month ago and had lunch with some friends, and I mentioned that you had narrated the audiobook. And he said, oh, she was the nanny in The Omen. He was so excited. I know. <laughs> <laughs> it's all for you, Damien. It's all for you. <laughs> and so people just, so people know your father was Jack Palance. Correct. 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 Daddy was Jack Palance, I'm yes. Just putting that out there. Um, Palance rhymes with balance, I think. Um, Palance rhymes with balance, yeah. yeah. He had said that. Now, um, now that you're, and you know, you're narrating audiobooks, is uh, like what kind of learn learning curve has that been for you? We talked oh a little God. bit about bit this on the phone before, but is it like a huge learning curve? Because it kind of intimidates me. Well, when we were talking on the phone, I, I yes, you're absolutely right. I was sharing with you that for me, it's been um, a straight up learning curve because one assumes, oh, I know how to read. I know how to act, da 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 da, da. But what I did not know how to do was work the technology. So the um, recording programs and systems, I use something called Studio One, uh, is something that I had to learn and be coached in um, and still being coached in to really learn the, the fine points of it. About 90% of narrators, this is, this is what I've been told. If I'm wrong, I'm sure someone will correct me, but about 90% of narrators are working out of their home studios. Mm -hmm. uh, and only the big... Uh, publishing houses have their own studios in New York and London and Los Angeles. So I took, um, like many people do, I took a, a closet. In my case, it was a, a, a walk-in closet upstairs and turned it into a studio with padding and microphones and equipment and scanners and monitors and this and that and the other. So um, that's that's how I'm doing it. And about how long uh, is a working session for you? How long does your voice last? You know, everybody's different. And the more experienced you are, the more hours you can do. If you were to go into one of the publishing house studios, a typical day in their studio would be 10 to 1 and 2 to 5. So you'd break for an hour. So that would give you six hours. Um, and... Uh, Normally, you're recording two hours to get one finished hour. So there are many, many people who go, oh, my God, I think I'll just become a narrator. Um, I have discovered, Mark, <laughs> that this is very rewarding and so much fun, but it's a lot of hard work. Yeah. Um, that, that's what I think that's what really m makes me say to myself, Mark, it, you toy with the idea. I've been toying with it for two years, but... I'm just, I'm not in a place to, to make that kind of investment in time and also financially, but because it, I mean, it take, it took years just to be who I am, just to be a, a self-published writer with a bunch of books out there and to do what I do. That's all a, a learning process. And I'm just not, I don't think if I'm, I'm being honest with myself, I, I don't think I would want to take that on, but, but I do know several people who do what you do and it, it fascinates me couple of quick things, just technical things that I'm always curious about. Do you read from printed paper or are you reading off of a, a like a, a tablet screen or something? Because how do you not I hear the sound of the paper? That's what I'm getting at. Okay, well, it, I've been told that in, you know, in, in years gone by uh, that <laughs> that turning the page 
was a big deal, you know, and it, in, it, re- it required lots of concentration and silence and editing. Now everyone reads off their iPads. Right. Well, that makes sense. Yeah. And what are the most rewarding things about it for you? Well, you know, you take a book like um, Black Cat, White Paws, um, bringing your character, Maggie Dahl, to life was so much fun. It was just a privilege because your writing of Maggie is uncommonly deep. And I cared about her. I cared about her. I thought it was interesting to see what the how the mystery would unfold and who done it and all that stuff. But as I think I mentioned to you on uh may have mentioned to you the other day, uh, her backstory and the loss of her husband and how she uh, she's challenged now about moving on in her life in her in midlife is um, is very moving to me. And it was it was really, really fun to bring her to life. Thank you. And those were um, because I I mean, this podcast is about you, but I, I come from really from a literary fiction background. I, I started writing mysteries about six years ago, but prior to that, all of the fiction that I wrote was, you know, what, what would be categorized as literary fiction. Uh, mm-hmm. So I try to have some of that because mysteries are about plot and you have a lot of fun with them, but I wanted something of a, of a deeper layer to it. And I'm really, it seems to have worked because a lot of people are liking it and you liked it. And yeah. I like, well, the, I I like the emotion in there. Yeah, I responded to it because, so it's like you've given us two gifts. One is a fun mystery and an interesting mystery. And the other one is this woman's story. So well done you, Mark. Thank you. Now, I am, um, another question I have for you. I, you can probably hear my paper turning. Uh, oh, hopes and goals for you. It, with this as a career, where do you want to take this? I mean... You know, you. Some people, it's about supporting myself, and because I know a couple of people who who quote retired, and this is what they do now. But mm-hmm. what what's your what are your primary motivations, and what do you want to get out of this? Well, um, what I'm doing now is, I mean, I'm by the end of January, I'll have done about seven books. Uh, the top narrators have all done five, six, seven hundred, nine hundred books. So what I want to do is is have this as a career, not a hobby. Um, right. And what that means is you are, if you are lucky enough to get there, and what that means is you graduate from doing royalty shares and and in in the case working expenses paid yes. to uh, SAG after minimums, um, and you can make money at this. But like everything else in the world right now, Mark, it's crowded. So you have to you have to uh, you have to go out to the producers and the publishers and uh, let them hear what you've done and ask to be put on their casting lists and and uh, considered for their books. So that's what I want to do. Thank you for further confirming that I don't think I'm going to be doing this. <laughs> um, well, I am. Um, there's an author that I that I interviewed that'll be the second one of these podcasts, but he's uh he that's his only income. He writes for a living and <clears throat> doesn't make a lot of money, but he writes. That's how he supports himself, and it's a huge amount of effort, and it's a huge amount of hustle, and it's a huge amount of of constantly churning out. You got to do four books a year. You got to do this. You got to do that. So I totally applaud people who are able to you know who can do that. Well, Um, I I think I mentioned to you at one point that this is a a business that has no agenting. So um, I don't, no one has a representative who is pushing them for, I mean, maybe at the very, very top level, you know, when, when um, Bob Woodward's book comes out, I'm not quite sure how that, um, but the point is that it's a, it's a networking business. Um, I have an agent, I have an agent for voiceovers and that's a whole different thing, but um, in this business, it's about networking and putting yourself out there and making sure that your demos and your reads get to the right people. Yes. Now I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna try inter- in ending the interviews with. I mean, the final question because I do want to uh, let people know how to find you, and then I also want to just plug the next in, the next uh, one of these. But what are you passionate about in your life? Um, 
can be, oh my gig, gosh. you know, like besides writing, besides audio, what, what are some of the things that you have that, that, that fire you up in life? Um, I'm passionate about my children. Um, I have a 31 year old daughter and a 29 year old son and I'm crazy about them. Um, and my daughter just got married and my son in, lives in New York and my son lives in London. So I'm also passionate about traveling. Um, absolutely passionate about traveling. I'm completely passionate about the country of Scotland. Oh, say, I'm a Scot. I'm a Scot. That's excellent. Are you? Yeah, McNeese. You? McNeese. Okay. McNeese. There you go. Well, yep. my favorite country is Scotland. And uh, if I can, I like to go once a year. Um and I'm passionate about hiking and, and cooking and all sorts of things. Excellent. And I have a sister who lives in Ojai, speaking of Santa Barbara. Oh, okay. She's been in Ojai for, gosh, 40 years. She moved out there when I was still in junior, in junior high school, I think. But So I've been to Ojai many times, Santa Barbara. I love that area. It was, so, it, it was totally devastated um, in the fires a year ago. Um, well, the fires, but, but down even, to even worse yeah. was the, well, no, even worse were the floods in Montecito. Oh yeah, and she ended up in a like a Motel Six for a week or something with all with with four dogs. Yeah, because she had to evacuate Ojai, but the house was very safe. very sad. Montecito was devastated, and and people lost lives. Yes, a friend lost her life. It was just just awful, awful, awful. Now, um, but anyway, it's a beautiful, beautiful area, um, Montecito, and um, and uh. I'm passionate about traveling and hiking and my kids, as I said, all of those things, but, but, but also reading books. Um, I'm reading right now. I'm reading, um, well, actually, I'm not reading. I'm listening to Bob Woodward's book, Fear, and to A Gentleman in Moscow, and uh, a play called Boys and Girls, which Carrie Mulligan, the actress, has recorded, and it's up on Audible. Wow. I didn't know they had to, like, they, they did put those things out as audiobooks. Yeah, they do now. Audio they do. Plays. Yeah, they do now. Now, how can people <clears throat> find you? I mean, it's hollypalance.com, but is what else do you want anything else you want to add to that? Well, hollypalance.com or um, on ACX, which yes, is how you and I found each other. ACX.com, which I mean, I think we should just say quickly that Amazon owns Audible mm -hmm. and the producing platform for Audible is um, acx.com. So those two things, those two places. Yes, and I, I mean, I like ACX. I don't, I don't know what other alternatives there are to them, but I've used them for seven, six or seven book audiobooks now, mm -hmm. and I've never had any issues with them. Uh, okay, so enough about ACX. I want to thank you for coming on. I do want to let people know that the next one thing or another podcast, I'm interviewing Marshall Thornton. I meant to just briefly mentioned him. A little a while ago, talking about um, working on uh, authors, a wonderful guy works. He's got some three or three series that are quite successful in the gay mystery genre, and uh, I'm looking forward to putting that out. But I'm really excited to launch this whole thing with you, Holly. And I Aww, can't thank I, you. And also, your audio was excellent. Your audio was so good. So many times when you when you when I podcasted with other people they're either on a cell phone and it sounds like they're on a cell phone or the audio is breaking up i just gotta say this was just a delight to have such well, guess why because i'm in my studio and it's all the walls <laughs> <at> it. <laughs> it was so nice oh my god but uh, well, thank, thank you thank you so much and thank you for letting me read your book and at some point i hope to come visit you guys uh and take a little tour of lambertville bring that to life where your mystery is set you'll love it Great. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mark. Take care.